Good morning, butterflies and buttercups. My name is Mara, my pronouns are they, them, and this is your daily glorification of obesity. Yes, oh, oh, oh. Even the dog doesn't want anything to do with this, man. The daily, uh, your daily reminder to glorify obesity, man. What are we, what are we doing right now? You know, like, is it, do, does she really does, man, fat girl posing is the TikTok <laughs> crazy, bro. I mean, you're going to say that you have, what did, what did she say her pronouns were? Uh, they, them? How you a they, them, but your TikTok name is fat girl posing? Posing, dude. What are we talking about right now? You don't, you're contradicting yourself at this point. Okay, well, you know what? Let's glorify obesity together, boy. Let's spin around in circles while we wear a flower dress and we're going to be super weird and not wear shoes, which I don't know why so many people are so comfortable not wearing shoes. I always have my shoes on 24 seven. I would even sleep in my shoes if I, if it wasn't, if it wasn't really uncomfortable. And the reason for that is we didn't have all these Americans dying for our country and all these uh, amenities that we have nowadays just for me to not wear shoes, okay? Like, I'm sick of going into people's houses and they go, oh, can you take off your shoes? Why? What are you, like, what are you talking about? You don't, like, clean your floors? Like, why? Why do I have to take off my shoes? You would never have to take off your shoes in my house. You can walk around fully booted up. Fully. I don't care. I don't care, dude, because if something happened, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. I can sprint when needed. Trust me on that. Come on, come on. Oops. Put myself on full screen. I hope you have a beautiful, amazing, wonderful day. Thank you. And I hope you find a reason to smile. Thank so you. So Jordan's getting canceled. Damn, it's loud as shit, dude. Canceled today because they said. I hope you find a reason to smile. So Jordan's getting canceled today because they said some some controversial stuff. I'll tell you what it was. What was it? <laughs> I said that um. Intentional weight loss is not a body positive act. Dude, buckle your seatbelt. Is that Jordan not being able to buckle their seatbelt because they can't like hook it up and over? Is that what I'm seeing right now? By the way, dude, look, I'm not here to deny people's humanity. If you want to be trans, you can, but this muscle mass is so incredibly crazy, dude. I'm looking at too much right now. I looked at a few of these persons. Uh, I believe this person identifies as a she, which is crazy i never understood look here's the thing if you want to be a man or a woman or whatever you want to identify as that stuff i'm fine with like announcing you as that thing but sometimes i think that it the cards may not be in play for you right i, I understand that maybe you want to identify i'm not here to deny your humanity or whatever but I, sometimes i look upon people that go i'm a woman and i'm like damn really really damn you fucking six foot two 220 bro five o'clock shadow you know what I'm saying? Like, I think you got you got to try really hard to really fit into that group. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you're it's an uphill battle at that point. You are so far in one direction, right? And it, it, it's so ridiculous to be like, oh, yeah, I'm a woman. I'm like, damn, bro. I remember having this conversation with this person, and they were adamant, right? Because I had misgendered them. And they were like, oh, I'm a woman. I was like, wow, really, dude? That's insane. I couldn't believe it. Um... Because this person was ginormous and had no put no effort into that. And I, of course I wasn't going to notice that this person was a, you know what I'm saying? Like this person was dressing like me. And then I guess their hair was like slightly longer than usual. And they were like, oh yeah, you know, I'm a woman. And I was like, really? All right. I mean, I guess. But I, was, I had to look up it. I was like, oh, all right, I guess. And then, you know, like, you know, biggest, meatest, whatever you want to call. But um, anyway, I don't know. I just got distracted. Like, look at the chin. The jawline is insane, bro. Absolutely astonishing uh, the amount of facial definition this person is, like, just emanating out of themselves. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just because you can wear a dress and a, and a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I still see the chin strap. Stuff, I'll tell you what it was. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> I said that um, intentional weight loss is not a body positive act. It's not a body positive act. I think it's a completely body positive act. Isn't that like the complete definition of body positivity? Like to accept yourself for things that you cannot change, right? If you lost a leg or maybe you can't grow. I knew a guy that he ripped off his nail when he was like a kid and he can't grow his nail back anymore. He's body positive about that because he acknowledges that even though his finger looks weird, he can't grow a nail anymore on his ring finger. He's positive about that because he knows that he can't do anything about it. What's he going to do? He can't do anything about it. It's all right. He's all right. I never really looked at him as less of a person because his fingernail didn't grow in. It's completely fine if your fingernail doesn't grow in. But the point of body positivity is to accept yourself 
for who you are and things that you cannot change about yourself, right? But for somebody like Jordan to sit there and be like, nah, you if you try to lose weight, that's not body positive. How is that not body positive? That's like that's like the most that's like the most body positive thing you could do is acknowledge that you have a problem and it's fully within your power to change that and you choose to do so. I would think that's the most body positive ever because you're being positive about what you want to do with your body, right? You're working on yourself. I don't know how it's not. How can it not be? By the way, please buckle your seatbelt if you're driving. I don't care what anybody says. It's it's very easy. It's just a simple, and I understand that somebody like Jordan may not be practical. Damn, bro. Look at the gap between the back and the back here. Damn, that's insane, dude. But because when I, when I sit down in seats, I want to be like, pres I know a lot of people, like I know white dudes get a bad rep for like putting the seat real forward and black dudes do like a thing like this, right? Um, I think I'll probably represent the white community on that one, dude, because I really do not want my seat to be that far back. I got plenty of black friends and they'll roll up to my house playing things like, uh, I don't even know, dude. Like they'll play things like, who's that one guy that nobody likes anymore That because he did that one thing, he peed on that one girl, R. Kelly. He'll grow up and he'll just be blasting R. Kelly and you don't even see him. Because he's so far back in the seat. And he's just like this. And he has a gun. Right? Not that that means anything. But he is black. And um, for me though, I need to have my seat always forward. Like whenever I get into his car, I always put my seat all the way forward, dude. Because like, it's uncomfortable to be leaned back like this. I can't see anything when I'm coming out. I'm granted, I'm not driving. But still, like I want to see things, right? Just in case. So please buckle your seatbelt. I know it may be impractical for somebody like you to do that. Since your body is so incredibly massive that the idea of like buckling may not be possible because you, you don't have enough slack to pull out to go click in. But I don't know what to tell you, bro. Lose some fucking weight or like buy one of those seatbelt, double seatbelt extenders because that's that this is this is definitely unsafe. and he's right it's not a body positive act it's, a it, body positive act to call jordan like i know that jordan identifies as a dude but it's like oh it's so off-putting when i see jordan and they go like i'm a guy it's like really that's i don't know man sometimes i get so confused with terminologies and how people pronounce themselves because i look upon jordan right i look upon jordan and i think where is the man right dude because like i know that there isn't like I know some people could be more manly than others, right? And that just because somebody has more facial hair or somebody is broader shouldered or whatever the fuck, that doesn't inherently mean that somebody is more manly or more masculine. I understand that. But like when I see Jordan, I just really struggle to find any type of indication of this individual being masculine. And I understand it's the way you want to identify, but it's like, where is it? You know, I'm struggling to find anything because you got a little peach fuzz. Latinas! Latinas got tons of peach fuzz, dude. I met a girl that was a Latina you set to shave her face every week. That shit was a common thing. So like I don't I can't even I you know, but you know, it's what Jordan wants to be, I guess. I don't know, man. Um you know, if you have the pronouns of he, him, I want my pronouns to be biggest meatus. That's what I want my pronouns to be. And he's right. It's not a body positive act. It's I mean body positivity got really white and thin washed and that's a conversation for another day But just here to tell gross. you gross white and thin washed as you are white and thin What are you talking about man? And by the way, I know that there are gonna be people that sit there and go Oh David because I had this one video that I said whitewashed and I was not aware that there were multiple definitions of whitewash There are two definitions of whitewash the one that I usually refer to is somebody that says Whitewash is usually when somebody goes like, oh, yeah, they're talking about something that was traditionally centered in like a particular culture or demographic. And then white people came in with their culture, which most people proclaim that white people don't have culture, which is neither here nor there. And they'll basically like wash over the entire organization or wherever that is with their Caucasianness or something like that. Or like the, you know, when somebody says like, oh, this girl is whitewashed. Usually when people say that, it was like they correctly pronounce words or they're like they're over they're over emphasizing certain things or maybe like they center more themselves more with i don't know it's really disrespectful sometimes because um if you're saying that to a black person what you're actually saying is like this person is no longer black or at least like they're a very lesser form of black you know what i'm saying it's, it's really fucked up to say that shit just because somebody like pronounces words correctly which is really terrible to say but uh or is the other one is like um whitewashing in the sense of like you take everything this organization or whatever it is has been known for and you just completely wash over it with like cultural like other things like i don't know but it, usually i when i hear whitewash most of the time people are referring to the first definition so anyway the pursuit of intentional weight loss is not aligned with that liberation which is the radical version of body positivity you're all looking for 
the fact that this person is like she's driving and then drinking and then no seatbelt is crazy to me, dude. And I believe their head is touching the roof. Am I wrong on that? So, and like, what are you doing? What is the position that you're in where you're driving and then like you could purposely, like you're almost kind of facing the window. Whereas when you usually sit in a car, you're facing forward. This person is just facing like the window and they have to like turn their whole head to the side to even talk to Jordan, dude. But I don't know. Um, I know a lot of people don't like wearing seatbelts unless you're, I think uh, New Hampshire, you don't have to wear a seatbelt, right? But I would still probably wear a fucking seatbelt. Why wouldn't you, dude? Like, I don't know what to fucking tell you on that one. Uh, liberation, which is the radical version of body positivity you're all looking for. So true. So don't true. get caught in the spider Dang. web of diet culture. So true. <laughs> they call it's weird when people have to hang out with people that are weird, right? I don't know, man. I'm not saying that they're weird, but usually, like, your friend group tells you a lot about you, you know? Like, it's, you know, hanging out with the kids that played Yu-Gi-Oh and had, you know, body odor and things like that, you would be like, oh, that person's weird. But then you talk to them like, oh, they're not that weird. But then you like, I remember one time, sometimes it's actually true. Like I remember I was talking to this one kid and he was telling me, he seemed cool. He seemed really cool at the time. He was gay, which is fine. But uh, I remember one time I was talking to this dude and he told me that he was growing a vagina. And then I was like, what are you talking about? What do you mean you're growing a vagina? Like in a jar? Like what do you, wh where? Like what are you talking about? He's like, I'm growing it at home. What are you fucking growing it? Like what do you, uh, where is it? What is it? How do you grow a vagina? And he was serious. Like he actually was serious about telling me that he had, was growing a vagina. And then he was trying to tell me that he had a girlfriend that was from Japan and that um, she loved him or whatever. And she'll fly out occasionally and they'll just stay for like a day and they'll just have sex or whatever. But then he told me that he was gay. So I was like, why are you dating like Japanese waifus if you love dick in your mouth, right? And then like the, the whole vagina argument, he never talked about that to me ever again. But uh, I'm st I still don't know what that even meant. Like, what do you mean you're growing a vagina? That's That was so off-putting because it had nothing to do with the conversation. I believe we were just playing like, Dragon Ball Z like we were playing like a fighting Dragon Ball Z game and then he was like yeah you know that I'm David you know that I'm like growing a vagina it's like what the fuck dude what are you saying I'm eating pizza rolls right now you know what is going on why would you even bring that up caught in the spider web of diet culture you know what, you know what I always want to know when you're fat I know I keep interrupting but you know when you're fat and you have a lot of surface area because you do have a lot of surface area. your body expands you get a lot of stretch marks and things such and so forth because your body's expanding out um, that's probably one of the best things about being fat is that you have so much extra surface area. Like this particular tattoo, I don't even think I would have the capacity to draw it on me because like my elbow is like one tenth of Jordan's elbow. So like you would be able to draw like a little tiny, a little tiny little spider web and it probably wouldn't even go up too far because I don't have a lot of area. But Jordan has so much fucking area, dude. You could put like everything. It, 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 everything could be like super bold. Everything could be put in bold and italic and fucking ginormous, dude. All across your fucking body, dude. That's got to be one of the best things about being fat. But then again, it's not really a, you know, because if you ever lose weight, that's just going to be on your kneecap. They call it glamorizing obesity <coughs> when like plus size people are just, you know, existing. Because they've built to, a system to that teach. is to value thinner bodies. And if, you know, valuing thinner bodies means that they get access to the happiness and the excitement and all the love um, while actively oppressing the bigger ones. Right? Who's they? When you, when you say that they created this system of oppression, who is they when you're referring to them? I, I, I would very much enjoy to hear what you say. Like, I would love to talk to, like, any of these people, actually, because... It's so ambiguous and when they when they come up with these like entities or groups of people that create diet culture or like try to get you to be centered in thin culture or some shit like that. Because I always think, isn't it, pro it's probably more lucrative. You'd probably make more money for keeping people fat given the fact that these people are eating double or triple the amount that they're probably supposed to be eating. And they always do it under the guise of, oh no, I'm eating a balanced diet. I'm healthy, which is like, are you are you fucking serious like you do do you actually think i'm dumb like it's so offensive when i hear these people say these words like i'm eating a balanced diet you literally cannot be eating a balanced diet if you're fat af that doesn't even make fucking sense like the entire idea of a balanced diet means you're eating appropriate amounts of food to satisfy your body you are not satisfying your body your body is getting more nutrition than it actually requires there's no way you're eating a balanced diet and then like i hear them say 
so often that there's like a group of people or somebody out there that is holding fat people back from achieving everything in life because of thin culture or some other bullshit. When in reality, what is thin culture? Eating less food? I don't know, eating appropriate foods? Foods that are like high in nutrients and working out? A $10 fucking gym membership? Whereas you probably ordering Uber Eats like Amber Lynn getting $3,000 orders a month? Like what are we talking about right now? You're gonna really fucking tell me? Like I guarantee you, okay? I'm eating less than you every single month, guarantee. Like, I'm spending way less money than you on everything. I guarantee you, dude. And this goes across everything. Deodorant, they always complain that they have to buy more deodorant. They have to buy bigger chairs. They have to buy this and this. All these extra amenities to complement their overweight body. And I'm just sitting here in a regular chair eating normalized food. And every once in a while, you know, <laughs> I'll have a pizza, right? A frozen pizza. But... These people are obviously eating way more than me and you probably, you know, like they're just, it's, it's crazy to me how they can complain that there's like this organization holding back fat people when all I see is the complete opposite. I don't think if there is an organization out there trying to propel thin people, I think there is also, if you want to say that, I don't think there is, but if there should be also an organization, if you believe that, that is propelling fat people to continue to be fat because it's very lucrative to keep fat people in the loop of being fat, to buying overpriced foods, buying more foods, Uber Eats and all this other stuff to continuously be fat because it's, it's, you make much more money to keep people fat. I mean, what do you, like you're sitting at home all day eating. Right. But when we see that fat people can also find love, find happiness, enjoy life, like truly find community in a world which is rigged against us and is actively oppressing us. Where? Well, then the system doesn't work anymore. What are you talking about, man? What is the world doing to oppress you? Are you like actually upset that like trees exist and that the world, like the fucking, the, 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 the world we live on has mountains and has places that you have to like climb over and shit like that? You do know that if you are working off of that logic, which is like society and like walking down the street or like, I don't know, like what are you talking about right now? Clothes not fitting you? You do understand if we got rid of society right now, you would be fucked beyond belief. Like there would be no type, and don't get me wrong, most people would be fucked, obviously, but at least most people have a higher chance of achieving life in these particular areas if, like, society existed and they just plucked you up and they put you in the middle of the jungle or, like, the savannah or some shit like that. Obviously, your chances of death are increased, but being fat, your chances of death are, like, almost 100% because you cannot do anything, realistically speaking here, dude. You would just be, like, pray for, like, an aardvark or something like that. It would be obvious that your body is cr tremendously out of shape for even societal standards, never mind being out in the wilderness and being able to survive that, you just you just be done. There would be no possibility of life. It would just be like maybe the first night you got lucky because you got like the whole big body thing and you maybe intimidate people. But then eventually the hyenas would just be like, dude, this person's lying, dude. I know they don't have anything. Let's go over there and let's eat this person for the next four months, dude. I think that arm alone has like 40,000 calories. We're good, dude. We only need like 200 to survive. We're fucking good. Let's just eat this person, dude. You know, that's what I would be saying if I was a fucking hyena. I'd be talking to all my friends like, let's go, man. Let's fucking go. That's basically like lasagna for us. Let's go, dude. Right? Instead of saying things like, oh, it's the world that's oppressing us because I'm trying to find love and I'm trying to find community, but people don't think I deserve that. What are you talking about? What? I don't give a fuck that you can find communities. I don't care. Go ahead. Find your fat communities, dude. I mean, there's like a, a niche community for everybody. There's there's even like communities for like furries, right? That's fucking weird. I mean, it, it's not as weird as this, to be honest, to find like a fat community of people. I feel like being a fur... Well, I feel like I'd be more accepting of being a furry than I would being like accepted in a fat community. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I don't know. Anyway. They don't have the carrot of uh, happiness can only be achieved if you're thinner because we can find it when we're fatter as well. So It's not about that. It's more like when you're fatter, you're working off a debuff already. Like being fat, I, <laughs> when you're fat, it doesn't simply just affect your physical body. It will affect you from like a hormon hormonal aspect as well. It will make a great imbalance in your brain. I've heard many fat people tell me that when they were fat, they had no, they had, they had no periods. I knew a fat guy that just, he told me very specifically that he would 
he loved having sex. He gained like 200 pounds within like two years stretch. Had no desire to have sex anymore. Didn't even want to beat off. And it was just like, he told me that when he started losing weight, his, his libido came back and he was more willing to like go out there and do other things like that. When your body doesn't need to produce what it needs to, it won't. It just really won't. And I hear this quite a bit when I hear people go, okay, men are producing less testosterone than they ever have, right? Why is that? Oh, it's plastic. Oh, it's because we're eating these terrible, disgusting foods and this and that. I'm not saying those things don't contribute, but oftentimes I see you're not looking at the real reason, which is you're not going outside. You're not finding a reason to exercise the muscle that you need to in order to achieve these particular types of activity levels in your in your fucking, you know, your geometry. You understand? Like you're not going to produce all this testosterone if you're sitting at home all day playing Minecraft for nine hours eating pizza rolls. Why would your body produce a ton of testosterone if you're that's what you're doing? It's obvious to me. And so when people have these like lifestyles where they're sitting down perpetually sedentary and then they're complaining you know that we don't like oh you don't understand we could be happy i'm sure you could be happy but you're working off a debuff like you're literally telling me that your your happiness level could be like for instance my happiness level would say let's just say my happiness levels is like 100 percent. whereas i feel like a lot of the times when i talk to these fat people they're telling me that their 100 percent is like my 40 percent. if that makes any sense right like they're they they have 100 percent, but they don't know that it could actually be actually 100 percent. whereas they're just kind of working within the 40 percent framework because they've never actually seen their their happiness go above that if that makes any sense the system no longer works right and that's why they undermine it by using this phrase, glamorizing obesity, vilifying us for just existing because we are existing. And not only that, we're not just existing, we're thriving. How can you say you're thriving while having all these debuffs going on, like society holding you back and all this other shit? But all right, yeah, you're thriving. I mean, that doesn't really make sense in correlation to what you just said by literally saying that you're being oppressed by they. I don't know who they is. Must be like some transgender person. But you're being oppressed by them. And then you're sitting here also proclaiming that you're thriving. All right, makes sense. Doesn't make sense, but it makes sense, sure. And they cannot stand that. We ca they? they cannot stand that we're beating the system. Fat people are allowed to take up space in the world. And if glamorizing obesity means that I'm glamorizing a life where you can find happiness and excitement and enjoyment and love and community while in a fat body, then yeah, I'm glamorizing obesity. I don't think that you're glamorifying, I don't think you're glamorifying obesity if you're just existing as an obese person. I think that you're glam, like if you could just do whatever you want, right? Like, do I think you're being, do I think you're like glamorizing being gay if you're just a gay dude? No, obviously fucking not. That's just not how that fucking works. But if you're fat and you're obese and then you're telling me that it's like completely fine to be fat and you're not suffering any harm and that being fat has no debuffs at all, then we have a problem. That's different. You're literally spitting in my face right now and I don't want it. Obviously, I'm not into that particular type of kink. I don't want you spitting in my face. I don't want you to be disrespecting me with this obviously incorrect logic that you have right now with the whole, you can be happy and this and that. I'm sure you can be. I'm sure that you have your own definition of these things, but that doesn't mean that they're actually applying to you. Like you're telling me that you're having a hard time doing all these things. You're telling me you have a hard time walking. You're telling me you have a hard time doing all this stuff and you're still telling me you're happy. I mean, sure, you could be happy in a lot of different places, right? I'm happy when I beat my meat, but then right after, I'm like, ah, man, what did I just do, man? That wasn't even cool what I just did, right? Right after, it's like eating food. Like, you feel satisfied in the moment, but then right after, it's like, fuck, what did I just do? Like, I'm sure you feel some type of happiness, but I think that when you say things like, oh, it's okay to be fat, it's beautiful, and all this other stuff, it's obviously not true. It's obvious you're telling, you're trying to convince people of this, like, this facade that you have because you feel happy, which I'm not doubting that you do, but I just feel like it's a different type of happiness. So intentional weight loss. So you purposely saying, I want to lose 20 pounds is fat phobic. Crazy, okay, crazy. Hear me out, but I think this woman might actually be onto something. If you are working out <laughs> and eating healthy with the intention of losing weight or being a certain size, you probably are fat phobic. In what way? Like if I don't even have the, if I'm not even thinking about in that particular aspect, 
then why would it even apply to me? Like this vocabulary system that we have now is so fucking weird. Like most people that are in the gym, most people that are trying to lose weight don't have it in the back of their mind that they hate fat people or they think that fat people should suffer or whatever the fuck. No, most of the time the people are thinking about it in a very personal way. They're thinking about how my life is going to be better or how I'm going to be able to accessorize the world more, how I'm going to be able to wear clothes or whatever the fuck it may be. You're going to be able to do more while you're thinner, right? You don't want to be held down by the boundaries of being fat, which is like mo what, what I what I consider most fat people. It's like you're living this life of literally just prison perpetually because you're not able to do the things that you want to do. Your body is locking you away from doing the things that you should be doing as a human being, right? So I feel like when most people are doing this stuff, when they're eating nutritious meals, when they're going to the gym, I don't think they're fat phobic because I don't think it's possible for them to be fat phobic because they're not even thinking about it in that particular way. I think it has to be conscious. I think it has to be a conscious decision to be fat phobic, to be thinking about, I hate fat people, this and this, you know, fucking, oh, fat people are disgusting. They smell like old cottage cheese mixed with Dorito dip, right? That's what they're thinking. I don't think it's like, there needs to, I feel like there needs to be at least t intent behind it for, for it to even like really apply to you. You can't just like blanket statement, have people just be fat phobic because they're going and working out. That doesn't even fucking make sense. What? That, like, am I like, I don't know, like, am I uh, anti-medicine because I don't go to the doctor? No, that's not how that works. I'm just not going to the doctor. I mean, I know that I personally am afraid of being fat. Cool. I'm afraid of developing diabetes Great. and increasing my chances of nerve damage and amputation. I'm afraid of damaging my joints and True. not being able to go up and down stairs without pain. Yes. I'm afraid of developing heart issues that might put me in the hospital or worse. True. I am afraid of decreasing my quality of life and life expectancy because Damn. of my own avoidable actions. And I'm afraid sis. for people who are experiencing all of the things that I mentioned above. So I'm not saying go around and be an asshole to people who are overweight. But America is in the middle of an obesity epidemic. True that. I think we probably need a little bit more fear of fatness. Period, sis. Slay. Somebody that's actually speaking about this logically, dude. And uh, it, this needs to be said, bro. Too many, you know, people get canceled for this shit, especially on TikTok. TikTok. TikTok is one of the most diabolical platforms for anything that's like out of the norm, right? You get canceled for things like something simple, like, oh man, I don't like the color pink on a car because I don't think it's masculine. You probably get canceled for that shit. But this particular statement is probably like the most cancelable statement that um, so many people, it's like so incentivized nowadays to like really put fatness in the forefront of our society because we have so many of people that are fat and at least we have people that are like, you know, speaking some truth, dude, actually telling the truth. So I agree with her. It's also okay to be fat if you want to or if you are True. here's my hot take as a doctor Damn. i totally agree it is okay to be fat we don't say that enough but it as needs a doctor you're saying that as a doctor how can you be a doctor and say that dude isn't that like directly well i mean maybe it makes it helps her make more money right more people will come in you know what i'm saying like it'd be like a mechanic being like yes car accidents actually not bad they're actually okay like Go ahead, bump it to that guy. I don't, it's like, that's great. That's awesome, actually. But anyway, here's the number to my mechanic shop. Just to let you know, I do a lot of mechanic work. Anyway, car accidents, you know, that's what, that, that's like the equivalent here. As a doctor, you should not be saying this, dude. Obesity or being fat. No, what are you talking about? That's like literally one of the main reasons why most people go to the hospital to begin with, especially here in America. Doctor, I totally agree. It is okay to be fat. We don't say that enough, but it needs to be normalized. Why? If you are fat, that is okay. okay. It is typically not a problem that requires immediate solving. It is not an emergency. You what is the wordplay you had to say, bro? What? It is typically not a problem that requires immediate solving. What is the wordplay? What I basically just heard from this woman is, you may not experience issues now. Like when you become fat, you're probably okay right now but in the future you're fucked that's what i'm hearing dude how can you even say that shit that is so like the word play that you had to say in order to even justify this shit is crazy because you're literally still admitting that it's bad for you that's crazy bro as a doctor too saying this shit bro you're literally admitting that it's going to be not good for you and you're telling people that it's okay to be fat <sighs> What? Say that enough, but it needs to be normalized. If you are fat, that is okay. It is typically not a problem that requires immediate solving. But, it, but you're literally saying it's a problem. It's not, look, peep the wordplay, right? It's not typically a problem that requires immediate solving. Take out some words here, right? It's typically not a problem that requires immediate solving. 
let's take out typically and we'll take out requires immediate okay so it is not a is not a immediate my bad yes it's not a problem that requires she's basic okay i don't know what the fuck i'm saying here but she's basically saying it is a problem um that is something that's supposed to be solved but you don't have to do it right now which is crazy bro you're literally admitting that it's an issue it is not an emergency you don't have to drop everything in the pursuit of being not fat Aaron yeah you don't have to you can go about it slowly but surely I always think that like the slow and steady pace is probably the better outcome anyway because you're gonna be keeping off the weight longer you're building healthier damn your forehead is big as shit dude what the fuck um damn that shit is big you it's okay to take your time while you're doing that stuff i think it's better anyway because you're building healthier habits you're actually embracing it fully whereas somebody can just shotgun it and think that they got something going and then eventually they they immediately because like listen nobody's hopping into the pool in the deep end it's very difficult for somebody that has no swimming experience to hop in the deep end and start swimming not money not many people can be doing that okay it's much better to dip your toe and then you know maybe go ankle deep and then go knee deep and then go more and more and more eventually you submerge yourself in the whole entire spectrum of losing weight and many ways of doing it right it's much better to do that slow and steady so that way you actually fully navigate it and you're acquiring the information over time rather than just like shotgunning it throwing yourself in the water and then immediately rebounding or drowning because you don't know what the fuck you're doing or you're you're just like you know too much all at once and so it's much much better in my opinion to slowly slowly take your time said this other thing in a different video that i totally agree with as well is that it is okay to not be healthy okay we as a doctor to say that shit is crazy i mean look some people are just not going to be healthy which is fine but to be a doctor and try to like advocate for people to be fat and you know that being fat because you're a fucking doctor you should obviously know this information you, you're, you know that this is like obviously the, the the root of most illness in america the number one number one cause of death here in america is heart disease and what is the number one thing that's linked to that obesity so what you're saying right now is you're literally spitting on the people that are like proclaiming this health advice and you're telling the people that are suffering from the illnesses that they're good they're fine they don't have to do anything about it what the fuck are you doing right now you're a doctor bro act like it is this moral failing this cardinal sin that you deserve a scarlet letter if you are not healthy and there's a name for that and that's called healthism and i don't get why do we have so many isms at the end of everything nowadays health isms what the fuck are you talking about dude it's all right look if you can't be healthy it's all right right but the difference is if you have the ability to be healthy and you do nothing about it then we got a problem dude you know what i'm saying like if you don't want to be healthy you don't have to but if you are proclaiming that it's okay to be fat and it's not a good thing to be fat um or it's a beautiful thing to be fat like it's it's just like completely all right that's an issue. That's an issue, dude. You're complaining about all these things that are hurting you in life and you do nothing about it, but you have the way. You have a you have you see the way out. You just don't do anything about it. And to be a doctor and sit there and try to tell people it's completely fine to be that is craziness. Get me wrong. In my line of work, there's a lot of people that I see that want to gain weight, lose weight, take other measures that they think will improve their health in some way. And by all means, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you with that and be supportive of that. But okay. a good doctor will not judge you for being fat. They what? will not judge you for being unhealthy. I they think we get I think we get things mixed up when we say a doctor shouldn't judge you or people shouldn't judge other people and this and that. What are you fucking dumb? Everybody judges everybody. Everybody's looking at things in the spectrum of I don't want to do this because of that or I saw this person do this and I don't want to do this. Everybody judges everybody. You cannot liter you literally cannot. Uh, go through the world without having some type of judgment on another person and then having that applied to you It's just what it is. I don't know if I can tell you so but being a doctor Even though you proclaim that you don't want to judge people or this and that sometimes you may need to step in And tell that person the real deal like listen, dude I know you're eating too much. You came in this time You came in last like two weeks ago at 250 and now you're 265 Dude, judge that person, dude. You're gaining weight. You're eating too much. You need to lower these calories, bro. And it may not even be a judgment. Like it may not, the judgment may not even be coming from a place of harm or ill will or pejorative natures. It doesn't have to. It just has to be more so like just discern. Like, okay, obviously this is not a good thing for you. It's not a bad thing to judge. It's really not. I feel like words like discrimination or judgment or like all these words. They are things that we do naturally. Like, I hate it when people just think because you hear the words like, for instance, discrimination. A lot of people will sit there and go racism, right? No, it's not fucking racism. I discriminate against a lot of things all the time, daily, 
like literally all the fucking time. And so do you. It's completely fine to discriminate against things. We discriminated people all the fucking time. It's completely fine. They will not judge the decisions that you made or the decisions that were made for you, which is the much more likely scenario. That's unless you're a child. If you're a child, sure. But if you're so you're not judging the person based off the decisions that they make. So if a dude comes into your office and he goes, listen, I fucking body slammed some eclairs last night. It was crazy. I was literally just swallowing them down endlessly in my throat, mouth. It was crazy. I had them all over my face. And then I ordered five extra large cheese pizza. Can you believe that? And I sucked off the delivery driver. You're not going to judge that dude and be like, damn, bro, what the fuck are you doing? You need to lose some weight. That's that's not good. What are you talking about right now? Because listen, if you're not proclaiming this, this, this as an issue and you're not coming from a place of you, you are the one doing it, how are they going to solve their issue? Because if you're saying that most people are not responsible for their weight gain, unless you're talking about children, how else are we supposed to tell that person that it's an issue? How else? Because listen, if you're approaching it from the perspective of it's not your fault you're gaining weight, well then if it's not my fault I'm gaining weight, then what the fuck can I do? Because if there's nothing I can do about it, then I can't do anything about it, right? It's just, I'm just doing it default. It's my passive ability to just be gaining fucking weight. So it's like an endless an endless stream of I can't do anything about it. So obvious fucking Lee, you need to step in, okay? And you need to say, it's your fucking fault. You are the one eating, making yourself bigger like this. And if it's somebody's parent, then you tell the parent, you're making your child gain too much weight. It's obviously not a good thing for your child to be nine years old and weigh 300 fucking pounds. Yes, it's, these things should be approached. And it's okay to be a little fucking rude or mean as long as you're getting the point across. That got you to the point where you are right now. We're here to help you with the changes that you want to make. And if you are someone who wants to lose weight for health purposes, and there are certain scenarios where losing weight can be health promoting. Wait, why do you have to say it like that? Like, you're literally walking around so many bushes right now to try to, like, appease the fat community whilst also proclaiming that it's okay to not be fat. Just keep it a buck. It's not a good thing to be fat, dude. Stop trying to fucking play both sides and be this devil's advocate of wordplay to try to make it seem like you're on both sides. You're not on fucking both sides, dude. You obviously think it's a negative thing to be fat, but you're trying to make it seem like it's not a bad thing. Bro, it's not good to be fat. All right. Don't sit there and be like, oh, there are certain scenarios where if you lose weight, you might be healthier. Yeah, I fucking know. Everybody fucking knows that shit. And if you're like 450, I think that losing weight is probably the one of the main reasons. One of the main ways to losing fucking weight would be beneficial to you tremendously. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Why is it so hard for people to say this shit as a doctor? We're here to help you with that. We are also here to help you if you decide to not make any changes at all. Dude, if I'm going to, listen, dude, okay? If I, What the fuck are you talking about, man? If I'm going to the doctors and I come in there and I go, I got this issue, I got this issue, I got all these problems, and then I go, I'm not really trying to change anything at all. Why are you here? Why are you fucking here if you have all these problems and you didn't want to change any of them? What is the point of you coming into a doctor's office with issues that you're not trying to fucking change? What are you doing here? Your your entire presence here is irrelevant. You wasted time. Nobody, you wasted mine, you wasted yours, you wasted everybody's fucking time coming here. What? Why would you even come to a doctor's office if you didn't want to change anything at all? That doesn't even make sense. It's a fucking place where you make changes. Okay, yeah, all right, man. That's a dumbass statement. Help you with that. We are also here to help you if you decide to not make any changes at all. Okay. We're still there. Okay, Super cool. upset with Universal Studios for not making roller coaster rides or their rides like seats for you know what i don't understand about women um and even certain certain guys certain guys too is when you have hair that's like in your face right i had that i had the era when i was growing up i had my hair look like it was in a beanie and it was like cummed over and it was fucking you know thick or whatever and i thought it was cool because i kind of looked a little emo and i looked like a fallout boy maybe like i look like toby mcguire from spider-man 3 and i thought it was cool but I, it occurred to me one day that it's impractical to have hair in my fucking face, you know, and I have to keep moving it out of my fucking face and shit like that. And I understand that certain women do it because it's for like beauty standards or like they think it looks pretty and stuff like that. That's cool, right? But what if you get into a fight with like a mountain lion? You're going to be at a disadvantage because you have to keep moving your hair out of the face, right? Or you want to fight somebody in general. And I see um, some girls doing this shit quite a bit where they have like their hair like this, you know, like covering their eyes. I'm like, can you see anything at all? 
Like, what do you, why, and then have to move out of the way, like, constantly, and I get it, you're doing it to be pretty or whatever the fuck, that's fine, but I always think, like, this is incredibly impractical, dude. I could not even imagine going throughout the day and just having to keep moving my hair out of my face, because I did do that for a long time, and I was like, this is ridiculous, man, this doesn't make any fucking sense, I'm literally just, like, wasting time moving my hair out of my face, cut it all off, I don't need it. If I get into a fight with a mountain lion, I'm better for it now, right? Anyway, but I think your hair looks good, I think it looks really good, actually obese people. I think Universal's in the wrong for this, and I don't think you should be victimizing yourself by promoting an unhealthy lifestyle. Obese. <coughs> They're oh, obese. Shit. They're like 4X, 5X, and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just calling it what it is. They're yeah, if you're like a 4 or 5X, dude, or more, and you're concerned that you can't fit on a ride, or this is like some kind of priority in your life, it always makes me so weirded out when I hear people that are really, really fat going like, oh, I couldn't fit on a ride at Universal or Disney World. And I'm just thinking like, why are you even going? Like, you're on life support right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got some issues, right? You can barely breathe walking down the street. What are you doing at Universal, right? Like, your priorities are really fucked up right now. And if you're, if you're telling me the biggest oppression in your life is that you can't get on most rides at Universal, you're 400 pounds. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you right now. It's going to be hard for you to do anything in life, let alone be on a ride at Universal. It's crazy that, even, like, that you even thought that was even something that you could do. You know, it's like people, real deal, be, will, will put themselves in positions where it's obvious to most people that they're not going to be able to contribute in a major way to these things, but they still put themselves in positions like that, right? It's like somebody with no legs going, my life goal is to be the fastest runner in the world. It's like, I got something to tell you, bro. It's not going to be the best here. You got no legs. It's not going to be very practical for you to be the best runner in the world when you don't got legs. You understand? You got to you gotta prioritize your life. You have to work. Like, I know it's very, you can do whatever you want in your life, but let's be honest, it's obviously not the case. You're not going to be able to play in the NBA. I'm not going to be able to be like Tom Brady and be super attractive and hot and all this other stuff, very attractive gentlemen and stuff like that. But it's okay because you can still do things just within the framework that you're in right now. Play with the cards that you're dealt with. Be a better this. Be a better that. I don't fucking know, dude. Be a better spoon licker. I don't know. The point I'm making is sometimes I feel like people just kind of put themselves in these brackets that they're not even a part of. You know? Like, why are you here? Why are you, why are you making this an issue when you're 450? Right? Why are you even here? How'd you get here? How'd you get through the, you know, the spinning, you know, it was like when you go in, okay, they used to have them here where I live, but when you took the subway, I think they're still like this in, in, in New York, but when you take the subway, you have to go through these like turn systems. How, like usually when you go into a, uh, amusement park, you go through one of those, right? How did you get by that? How did you get through that? Because like two of those spins, there's no way you made it through that shit. Oh, I guess maybe they had the door or there's like a door to the side that somebody had let you in. But don't you feel kind of bad that you can't even go through one of those, right? Like I remember one time I was out with one of these like, I was out with a really fat person when I worked downtown, right? For like this eco company or whatever the fuck. This woman was like really fucking fat. And um, she had to go through like a, like a turning door. You know what I'm talking about? Like you go in and the door turns and then you, it's like a revolving door, right? And she could not do it. She literally couldn't fit in the triangle-shaped doorway because she was really fat. And then she had to t she had to take the regular door. And I thought, that's crazy. I mean, granted, it's great that there are regular doors. And I always thought the revolving doors were kind of impractical anyway because it really, like, sometimes you get trapped, you know? Like, I've gotten trapped in those shits a few times. And they're kind of dangerous a little bit, right? But the fact that this person saw no issue with not going through that door and just had to accept the fact that this was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain things, you, I feel like you gotta take steps. Eventually, you could be a part of this organization, but until then, what are you doing? One is airplanes. They're like, I shouldn't have to buy a Comfort Plus or a First Class just Period. to sit on the airplane. They need to accommodate yeah. us for just regular seats. Yeah, it doesn't make sense how you could be like really, really fat, obese, ridiculously overweight and think that you deserve more than everybody else, even though you put yourself in that position to begin with. How can you expect other people to pay for what you've done to yourself? That, that is victimization. True. It is genuinely victimization. True. The perfect example of fat phobia and thin privilege. What are you fucking talking about? That person was like keeping it a buck. That person was keeping it a solid buck, dude. What do you mean fat phobia? How is everything fat phobia nowadays? Can you imagine speaking fact and just having somebody go, oh, this is fat phobia. Go ahead. People deserve to take up space. They do deserve to take up space in a very 
general speaking sense. You can't sit there and say, I deserve to take up space and you deserve to take up space and you weigh four times as much as me. Do you think your space is equal to my space? Could we be honest for a second? Like it's obviously different. It's way different. And the fact that you could just simply say we deserve to take up space is crazy given that your space is significantly more than mine. And it's obviously negatively affecting you as well. People deserve to be accommodated for their body sizes. No, they don't. I got to fucking talk it about, dude. Listen, being here in America, being in society means that you have things afforded to you because you exist. If the society wasn't here, do you still deserve that stuff? Do you still deserve to take up space? Do you still deserve to have accessibility options? Do you still deserve that stuff? It is a privilege to have a society that gives you as many rights and, and accommodations as it does. I'm not saying things can't be improved. Always fight for things that can be improved, of course. But to sit there and think that you deserve shit even though you are putting yourself in a bracket, that means that you have to get more than everybody else and think that you still deserve it is crazy to me because you're doing it to yourself. And I'm get, I'm being punished. I'm being punished because I'm not getting the same I'm not getting the same amenities as you. You're literally complaining that you can no longer do the things I can do, even though I had no contribution to that. It was all on you. How can you sit there and shit on everybody else and then talk? from this high rise and say that everybody's fat phobic, even though you did it to yourself. I don't know what to tell you. This obesity is a slur. Okay. It's based on the BMI, Okay. which is racist. <sighs> it was not created by a healthcare provider. It was created by a mathematician. So uh, why are you smiling while you're saying this shit, dude? You do understand like when people make this claim of the BMI being racist and oh it's sexist too because women weren't applied to it when it was made. I, they always fail to identify the fact that we are not using the same BMI from I don't know 200 years ago. Things are different obviously now and the BMI has never actually been completely accurate. People that fit in different body types are obviously not going to have the BMI applied to them completely which is fine because if you know that you're an anomaly then don't use the BMI and especially here if you don't want to use the BMI you don't have to. You could just look at your weight and you can see okay here's the thing. Uh, I know that I'm not probably in the most healthy body size, given the fact that I weigh 400 pounds or my, my, my under boob part over here on the right is touching my kneecap. It's probably not a good indicator of health. Probably not. Right. Am I wrong? You could just look at yourself in the mirror and see that you're carrying around double or even triple what you're supposed to be carrying around and just work off that. You can just do that. You don't have to weigh yourself. You don't have to. It's just completely fine. But they're so, it's so dumb to sit there and say we shouldn't use the BMI because it was made by a guy that wasn't a doctor, which is fine. I don't know why it matters if the guy was a doctor or not or the guy was racist. I'm Frankly speaking here, um, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I know a lot of people might think that I'm a bigot or maybe I could be racist for this, but I would go as far as to say that even though something was made by a guy that was racist 400 years ago or you know 200 years ago, I don't care as long as the invention was good. Okay, as long as we can use the invention, like would you drive down the street and see a stop sign and think, you know who invented that stop sign? A racist. So you know what? Hit the gas. Just drive right through. No, that's dumb. You're still going to utilize things that are made by racists. You're still going to utilize things that are made by sexists because otherwise society wouldn't work. Everybody was racist at some point. Okay, like go back far enough. You're going to find some fucking terrible, disgusting people, but only by today's standards because you're judging them in the context of today and not judging them by the context of back then. I'm not saying that racism and all this other stuff is good. I'm just simply saying that at a certain point in time, it was okay. You understand? And to, to sit there and judge people by the ideas of then and, and put them within the context of today is dumb and stupid. And then also sit there and say we shouldn't use something because something was racist at one point in time or somebody that made it was racist is fucking stupid. It's so dumb. It's so fucking ignorant. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't apply to anything else apparently because there are many things that we use in our everyday life that I guarantee you was made by a guy that probably punching bagged like, I don't even know, like he was hanging ostriches upside down by their feet and he was just beanbagging them. And would you still use it? No, because it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, there are plenty of atrocities and things that people do. Yeah, they are. I'm not going to say they're not bad, but they made good things. Like R. Kelly was a guy that did a lot of bad things. You still bump his music, don't you? It's not really beneficial 
for health at all or determine health. It really, just because you don't see a reason for the BMI to exist doesn't mean it's not a good indicator of where people should lie. It's a general idea of where people should be based off the height and the width and other things that you can account for too with the BMI. It's a lot more specific now than it ever has been. So you can have a lot more metrics involved, okay? And the fact that you don't see a reason for that to exist is fine, but that's dumb because it's an idea. It gives you a spectrum of where you should be. That's what it, that's what it ultimately is. Use words like person of larger size. I think it's funny having a thin person constantly use that word and blame the individual for their weight gain, not knowing their circumstances. Who else are we to blame? Listen, dude, okay? Because we live in a society we have to work off generalizations because otherwise we wouldn't get anything else done. We have to work off generalizations. Everybody speaks in generals. When people say women do this, men do that, cars do this, you do understand that even though there will be that one person that goes, my car doesn't do this, my wife doesn't do this, my husband doesn't do this, okay, that's fucking fine. But that doesn't mean that we don't have numbers and statistics and other things that you can look at and see that, okay, most of the time this does happen. And I know that you have your anecdotal evidence, but it doesn't fucking apply. I'm sick of people bringing up anecdotal evidence for things that are completely fucking irrelevant. I don't care that you think that fat people don't have these issues, that like you as a fat person don't have these issues. It is something that happens to most fat people. So when you say, we don't know why fat people are gaining weight, Sure, you don't know why this particular fat person is gaining weight, but based off of the information we have and societal structures and things such and so forth, we can assume based off of a good guess here, okay, that that person gained weight because they ate too much. Because that is the most common reason why people gain weight. So and when I say that shit and then you're saying like, you don't know that, we can always have an argument. I hate when people do this thing where they go, you don't know because this could be this and that could be this. It's, it's, it's like, a, it's not, a, it's a nonsensical argument and it's a nonsensical way of thinking about anything because you're never, ever, ever, ever going to get anything done to have these conversations with, with hypotheticals. I mean, not hypotheticals with these like, uh, uh, nonsensical arguments of like, I remember I was having this conversation with somebody and this person said something like, oh, we don't know that if the tallest mountain in the world is Mount Everest because there could be a mountain somewhere on the earth that is taller than Mount Everest. And I thought, sure, but that doesn't mean that the most tallest mountain right now is in Mount Everest and we're going to use it as that particular guy. Oh, we shouldn't use Mount Everest because we don't know. Such a dumb way of thinking about things because the information that we have right now, that is what we have to use. It's general and it's what it is. I don't think, otherwise you would have nothing get done. Yes. Um, saying that it's not corporations' jobs to accommodate those people. It's, it's not. just saying that, like, fat people don't matter. It's what? okay to discriminate against them. This yes, it's, look, it's okay to discriminate against people. Certain people, probably not. Under the law, it's not, it's not okay to discriminate against, for instance, gays, blacks, other peoples, and stuff like that. Based off of race, you shouldn't be discriminating, right? But when you're complaining about things that are not, the things that are changeable, and you're saying that we should not be discriminating against these things. Why? Why? Because you do understand, like, if I was to hire a guy, okay, and there was two people, okay, a black guy and a white guy that hired for my position, I don't care that they're black or white. If these dudes can do the job, I'm going to hire either or or both. You understand? But if there was somebody, okay, like a thinner person that I see has the same expertise, all this other stuff, right? Compared to a fat person, I need them to do a job. I'm probably gonna go for the thinner person because I don't need this. I don't. I need this person to be walking all day. I need this person to be up, up, and and, and moving around. And it's very impractical for somebody of a higher weight to do those things accurately. So, I don't think it's. I think it's completely fine. And by the way, it's okay to discriminate against people. You do it. I do it a lot. When I'm dating, guess what? You you discriminate against a lot of people. It is what it is. I don't like people that do this. You don't like people that do that. That's fine. That's okay. Discriminate. Go ahead. It's completely fine. When I walk down the, when I go to the supermarket, right, and I see that they have certain foods that are on sale compared to the ones that are not on sale, I'm discriminating against the ones that are not on sale and I'm buying the ones that are on sale. Person even said like the majority of people are thin and they are regular size, yep. even though that's not the case it is. at all. It is. It's kind of comical because they're so privileged in this world that they can only see this world from themselves. <laughs> really? Really, isn't that, that's very, imp that's very interesting that they can see the world the way that they are. How does that work exactly? So you don't see the world how we, how you are, huh? Only you? Mm, okay. That's interesting. Interesting statement. And by the way, the, the, the entire world, it, it, it like by, by all the, uh, estimates that we have, most people in the world are thinner. I mean, granted in the, like most Westernized countries, America, 
Canada and other places like that, there are a lot of fat people. I will agree with that. But does that mean that we should be accommodating for them? And they don't truly care the effect that their words have on fat people. I'm all due respect. Um, it shouldn't matter to you since they're fucking words, you know, like some words should have a little bit more value behind them, depending on the person that's saying them. Sure. But to be offended or to be very, very, uh, I don't know, off put by somebody's words in this particular sense. What do you want, dude? I'm, you know, like it, it, these are fucking things that I got to say. And the words plainly speaking are accurate and how harmful that is and how discriminatory this is and there's no like kindness or compassion it doesn't need to be though what do you want you want people to be kind to you or do you want the real information what do you fucking want you want to change how everybody speaks to be in a kind way format why why do you get to choose that shit we like tone policing everybody because you think that you're being offended by one thing that they say have you never offended anybody in your life have you only ever talked to somebody in a very nice way of speaking how do you even know that's a good way of doing it to the person that you're talking to how do you even know you don't know talk the way that you talk don't tone police people and sit there and say oh you shouldn't talk like this or you shouldn't say that go fuck yourself what do you fucking want from me i'm trying to tell you the right information I'm trying to give you the shit that's gonna help you out and if you're gonna sit there and go oh it's just you know the way you said it was just really mean and kind of hurt my feelings and it's like really ignorant towards how i feel what are you fucking talking about that i'm trying to help you out i don't give a fuck that it hurts your feelings what about how that would feel for the person in the larger body or any kind of understanding either that it is a person you are talking about yeah i know that's why i'm giving them the correct information okay the I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the way you say something doesn't hold value. It does, okay? Depending on the person, you should probably contour your words to that person to make sure the information is correctly received. Because sometimes, depending on how you say something, it will not be correctly received, obviously. But ultimately speaking here, dude, as long as you get the information to that person, what do you fucking want, dude, right? Obviously, I'm going to talk to my mom differently. How I'm going to talk to, like, I don't know, bro, Sharon Stone or fucking... Barack Obama, you understand. It's going to be different for different people. But that doesn't change the fact that the way I format my words, I don't know why it's impacting you so much. It, would it really change if I told you, like, okay, being fat has a lot of health effects and it's obviously not good for you. And I don't think that the world should be able to accommodate you even though you put yourself in this particular bracket. Or if I said it in the other way, which is fat people don't deserve shit. And the fact that you think that you deserve that shit is crazy. It's the same way. It's the same shit. It's just worded differently. It's a person. They're not invisible. But all you keep saying is obese, is yeah. obese. Yeah. You don't deserve to be accommodated because you, you are fat. You do not matter. Not because you're fat. Just in general. You don't deserve any of that shit. I don't know why you think you just deserve shit. Because you are fat. Fat people matter. Yeah. Fat people matter. Okay. They are people. Yep. And they matter. Of someone's health by looking at them. This, 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 it's such a dumb statement to say, like, you don't know somebody's health by looking at them. You can indicate a lot uh, based off of how somebody looks. And to sit there and try to pro proclaim ignorance or say that you can't do it is insane to me because there is so much that you can get from somebody's physical appearance. So fucking much, dude. Being obese is a good indicator of a lot of things, okay? Um, poor health. Okay, uh, that's a guarantee. That's a fucking guarantee. And now, granted, I don't know if you're losing weight, but I can tell that you're poor health. I can tell you probably have joint pains. I could probably have, you probably have a poor communication with food. You probably don't understand nutrition. I can tell a lot. Same thing with like, you go on a date with somebody, right? Let's say you're gay or you're a woman or whatever the fuck. And you're going on a date with a guy. The guy shows up and he looks like Danny DeVito, right? He looks like Danny DeVito from Twins. Wife beater. He's got like pants that don't fit. Are you going to assume that this person has a good style sense you're gonna assume that this person cares about themselves with grease stains underneath their armpits no you're not no you're not so you can tell a lot based off of somebody's physical appearance and to sit there and say that you can't is so incredibly disingenuous so incredibly ignorant and it doesn't make sense it literally is standing in a front to how we actually view people period no you don't so to say that people are promoting an unhealthy lifestyle because they're fat don't know if they have a medical condition you don't know what me medications they're on cool. you're not asking what their dietary i don't need necessities to. Are. it's not my job it's not my job it's not my job it's not your job 
to go up to every fat person or everybody in general and be like, before I make this assumption, before I, I say anything or do anything, let me ask you. It's not. It's not. And I, you know what? There was this time, right? I was on this live streaming app. Somebody had a big um, rebel flag behind them. Okay? You know what I'm talking about? Um, during the Civil War, they had the rebel flag, right? The Confederate flag, which is, you're right. You could totally fly that flag. But I asked this person, why are you flying that flag? And they went through, oh, you know, I believe in this and this and this. And I thought, okay, you believe in all these things. But you do know what that flag stands for. If a lot of people are going to look at that flag and identify you with one particular aspect, which we all know what that is, right? Slavery, racism, this and that. It is not everybody else's job that sees that indication and has to ask you what you really mean by that. We're making judgments. We know what this stands for. And we're going to apply that when we see it. You understand? Now... Because you think you are afforded rights or you think that you are afforded somebody to ask you these questions is dumb because it doesn't work in any other scenario at all. So no, you're not. Okay. Um, people are going to make these, people are going to make these reasonings themselves. Are what they eat during the day. You have not asked. I don't need to. You have not asked anything about I don't that need person. To. And in fact, research has been proven to show the weight stigma and fat phobia. Don't, don't say it and discrimination based on weight and bias poses threat to their physiological and physical health. It's like, I tell you, like, guess what? You're fat, that's not good, and you start gaining weight? How does that work exactly, dude? The stance, it doesn't make sense because it's ignorant to thermodynamics. You're literally ignoring one of the key aspects to our reality, and you're trying to proclaim that me telling you that you're fat is going to make you sicker, or it's gonna make you fatter, when we're, we're, we're talking about helping you to get one of those things, like unsick, un, uh, you know, more healthy and all this other stuff. Why? Like, if I'm telling you this, I really have to like sugarcoat it as much as I can. What if I sugarcoat it too much to where it's not even benefiting you? Like that one girl that said like, it might help you get healthier. Maybe not really kind of might. You're not actually helping me. You're not giving me the correct information because you're not telling me the truth. You're, you're dancing around it to try to make it seem like you're not a bad person. I don't care if you think you're a bad person, just tell me the truth. Give me the information as best as you can, as accurately as you can, right? So, no, it's not the truth. I don't know why these people are always so hung up on, on, on the way somebody says something. Skinny people go through exactly what fat people do in society. As a fat person myself, I'm gonna have to disagree with you and I'll tell you why. How many ads or magazines have you seen saying, get fat quick or gain weight fast? Probably not that many. It's because getting thinner is not going to have the same correlation of illness compared to being fat. You understand like there are more people. It's like these people just never want to talk about averages or really understand how numbers work. There's a reason why we have more advertisement for people that are overweight compared to people that are thinner because we know that when you're fat, you have these illnesses or things that are going to contribute to your health in a negative way that are probably going to, it's probably going to help if you lose weight or if there's some kind of like hidden trick or something like that to help you lose weight. So obviously if people are struggling with weight and there are people that are not struggling with weight, you're going to have these people be contoured more. You understand? Like that's how basic economics work. You have a product that's going to be centered towards somebody because they need it. I don't know what the fuck I tell you. Like it's obvious to me. There's a reason why I don't see people gaining weight. Yeah, because there's no reason that I'd have a problem gaining weight. We have tons of things that help you gain weight, like eating food in large quantities. If any, now how many ads have you seen saying get skinny quick or lose weight fast? probably a lot more that people are denied jobs proper medical care don't have equal access to clothing and travel but it's obvious that these things are going to be impacted because you guys are putting yourself in a bracket that is literally unsustainable and doesn't accommodate for anything in society that would benefit you I, like you being fat okay and then being upset that you can't get a job is so incredibly obvious to me because why would somebody an employer want to hire you as opposed to somebody that can get the job done in a more accessible or expedited way you it's like why would it Two job, two job applications and you are unfit, physically speaking, it's not going to be practical to hire you. I don't know what to fucking tell you, bro. It's obvious. And the same thing for, like, traveling, bro? What are you fucking talking about? Like, cars don't fit you. You can't fit in car seats. You can't fit in airplane seats. Why is that, the, why is that everybody else's job to fix your problem? Like, I don't understand how these people can never take accountability for themselves. 
are discriminated against in so many ways, including being looked at as lazy, disgusting, so. that we don't take care of ourselves. Yeah, but like other people look down upon to what, whatever. It's... There's this term called fat phobia. I'm sure most of you have heard of it. I've personally never heard of skinny phobia. If that's a thing, I'm truly sorry because I've never heard of it. But yeah, like there's literally a word for what fat people go through. But that doesn't mean that just because there's a word for something doesn't mean that it's like greatly impacted or it's like anything significant at all. We have plenty of words that identify a lot of things. That doesn't mean they hold a lot of value, right? Am I wrong? Like doors. Are you fucking upset now? Like, are you, did you just like get scared because I said doors? No, no, obviously fucking not. Just because there's a word for something or identifies something doesn't mean that there's like, I don't know, like that puts any value on it. Okay, like, I'm short. Like, what do you want from me? Like, what does that even have to do with anything? Oh, yeah, that's how you know it's a problem because there's a word for it. Okay, the fuck? There's a word for, like, everything. Like, the English language, I believe, is, like, the most, uh, like, it has the most words compared to every other language. It's, like, the most diverse language ever. So, like, yeah, I fucking hope so, dude. Who do you see walking down the runways at fashion shows? 95.6% of the looks presented at New York Fashion Week 2023. Is this really like the, is this really where you want to go to? Like you, you're, 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 you're in your position of being fat and talking about oppression. You go to runway models. Okay. Yeah. You obviously have, you know, you could tell, you could tell this woman lives in like America or something like that, dude. Because listen, you having this problem, you know, there's like a lot of people in the world just dying of like starvation, right? You know, like a lot of people don't have food, right? You know that? And to sit there and be like, oh, oppression of fat people because runway models, bro, dude, man, that is like, if you lived in any of the time frame, you wouldn't even have these problems. It's so telling, you know, it's great that we have, we live in a society where these are even issues to be had, but it's really, really agonizing when these people talk about them like this. We're in a size zero to four. This might start some shit, but I have literally fantasized many times about having a different ED, a more restrictive ED, so that I wouldn't have to live in a larger body, which is a disgusting thought. And I feel bad even saying it out loud because I know I've seen how much people struggle and how much of a struggle all EDs are. But that's how much fat shaming pushes someone to want to be skinny or okay. to lose weight. Just wanting to be treated equally and not seen as disgusting or lazy. But I don't, you don't, Somebody doesn't owe you that. Like, you can't... What you want is, like, you want somebody to give you something without having anything in equal return. Like, it's not somebody else's job to see you in a particular way. Like, just because you want something doesn't mean that other people are supposed to give it to you. You do understand that, right? There's, like, there's got to be some kind of equal line of credit. Or, like, uh, I do this for you, you do this for me. Not just I do this for you and I get nothing out of it. You understand? Like, it's... Just because you think you deserve something doesn't mean you actually get it or like you actually deserve it because that doesn't make sense at all but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed today's video and uh if you did leave it down below by typing in uh sorry if you enjoyed today's video um leave it down below uh by leaving a like comment subscribe sharing all those things i would appreciate all of that just like majorly i would appreciate it tremendously to a different degree i mean it, it's, it's impossible to describe how much i would love if you did any of that stuff if you want to check out the rest of my videos you can go ahead and click down here and you will see a profile picture like this and then you can click that and you can find the rest of my videos and if you like this one you probably like those ones too if you watch the video in its entirety leave it down below by typing in cloth because i got a cloth and i bought a cloth I bought this because I had some spray stuff and I had some stuff on my screen because I don't know if you guys notice, but I spit sometimes when I talk and uh, I noticed that I was spitting on my screen and I was like, that's gross, right? So I bought a deluxe cleaner and you can spray your screen. It doesn't like kill your screen or anything like that. And I wiped it down and they gave me a cloth and it's actually really soft. And um, I like it. I like cloths that are really soft. I don't know what this is made out of actually, but it says it's made in India, which makes sense because I guess we don't make actual things anymore um but anyway um it doesn't matter if you're made in india or i'm made in india if you're a beautiful person you smell amazing um i think you really do smell amazing dude i think you're a raw like you don't even have to wear deodorant you don't have to wear um perfumes or colognes or any kind because your natural scent is oh, your natural scent is so beautiful so exhaustingly amazing when i have a chance whenever i do have a chance i just need to smell you up give a good just intake of oxygen around you to intake the amount of beautifulness that you emanate off your body it's intoxicating it's so beautiful and i want to grab you by your aura and embrace you fully just give you the biggest bestest hug consensually and tell you that you smell amazing because you do smell amazing 
If you want to follow me on social media, you can. Um, it's linked down below. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter. Like I said, if you want to follow me on those platforms, you can. I barely upload on them. But if you want to follow me on those things, you can. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 